uh, we were really excited about it. If you didn't join us last night, we were also uh, just doing a Painting From Life hangout session last night. Uh, so if you want to, you can go back onto YouTube and check that out as well. It was a lot of fun, just a three hour um, portrait painting demonstration and hanging out and just having fun, you know. So uh, today on our free Friday, we wanted to talk about, um, we had a, a several people call in or email us and say that they wanted to know more about best practices for waste and getting rid of your excess paint after you're done and clean up. And so I thought we thought it'd be a really good thing to put it out there to just talk about what we do. Uh, there is a lot of really great resources as well. You can go, Windsor Newton seems to have a lot of really great resources. I know that Natural Pigment uh, Company also talks often about good practices, uh, safety practices for how to dispose of everything responsibly. We're gonna talk about how we do things, but we definitely think you should consult um, professionals as well to make sure that wherever you are, you're adhering to the laws and rules of that area. So first thing I wanna talk about is that if you, not all paint is toxic, but some paints are. And so I think the first step would be to look to see what it is you're painting with. Um, cadmiums are a toxic heavy metal. Lead, I paint with both cadmium and I also paint with lead white. Uh, so because of that, I'm always paying attention to how much uh, I get it on my hands and things like that. Uh, another color that I use um, is vermilion, which has mercury in it. And so um, another reason why I want to keep mine hands clean but if you're using just like oxides reds yellows it's, there's quite a few colors on the paint palette that are non-toxic and so are easily capable of being disposed down drains and things like that um, i know that jeff hind has talked about before that he um, uses only non-toxic materials when he paints and i don't even think he uses some solvents and turpentines as well i think he cleans everything with oil. So and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But first things first, you want to keep your hands clean. Hands uh, are obviously the thing that are going to get the dirtiest. Uh, for some people that are messy painters especially, I tend to be a clean, more of a tidy painter, but I still get it on my hands. And the funny thing about oil is sometimes you won't know it's getting on your hands because it's like the same temperature and it evaporates very slowly. So it's the, it, you don't know that it's on your hands when you get it on them. So what I tend to use are gloves. I use latex gloves. They do make vinyl gloves out there for the people who are allergic to latex. I know there's a very small few people that are. Um, so I would definitely go down the route, route of vinyl, which works really, really well as well. Um, another thing, and this is basically the company, uh, you can find all of these gloves online. You can get them off Amazon. They're very affordable. They're used in all of the medical industry, and that's kind of what I'm using. They're um, surgical gloves, and my brother recommended me, he's a, a physician, he was recommending um, surgical gloves just because they just hold a little bit tighter. I like to be... Um, really tactile and be able to feel, feel everything that I'm doing and things to not be loose on my hands. So uh, I tend to get the ones that um, stay pretty close to my fingers when I'm working with it. You don't have to use gloves. Um, there are quite a few painters that don't. Uh, and there's a couple of options for those people that uh, just find it annoying to have gloves on. Uh, the first option that I would say is when you are done uh, painting, wash your hands thoroughly. Now, for me, that gets incredibly annoying. And the reason it gets annoying is because there'll be quite a few times I'm taking a break, and um, if I'm gonna go like grab a snack or do anything, drink a glass of water, I need to go wash my hands because I don't wanna get those heavy metals onto anything that is gonna be um, either a utensil that I'm gonna be using to consume food or putting my hands on food. So um, you never have to worry about the metals going through your skin necessarily. Um, 
turpentine would be more of a worry there than, than the actual heavy metals. But you do have to worry about it going, like ingesting it. So that's why I would say to um, be careful if you're going to step away to always wash your hands. The soap that I was always recommended even since I went to uh, get my art degree was uh, lava soap. It's very, very cheap. I think we have an image of it that Joe's going to pull up for you. Basically, it's a very uh, it's a soap that has uh, pumice stone in it, so it, it's a little bit uh, gritty and rough, and that helps with scrubbing off any excess oil. It's also pretty tough on oil, but it's really um, gentle on your skin. So, the one of the things that they advertise is you can wash quite often with it and it's not going to dry your skin out. If you're using like dish soap or other things, I've, I've had it just almost crack my skin over time because of how, how much it dries it out. So that's one thing that I would um, highly recommend if you're not using. They also make a thing called liquid gloves. I personally don't recommend liquid gloves. Uh, they probably do work, but they come on clear and you don't know where kind of you've covered and where you haven't and I just don't know how well they cover. I don't know how well it comes off. I would just say wash your hands if you don't use gloves and um, I would say preferably use them. So the next thing um, I'm going to talk about is how to clean your palate. Uh, there's two sort of ways you can do that. If you have a glass surface, I this is doing the painting from last night and I decided to leave my palette and let it dry a little bit so that you could see what how I would clean it. And so um, if it is a glass surface, like a tempered glass that you're painting that you're mixing on, you can use a very cheap, you can buy them at Home Depot. It is a, a glass pane scraper that scrapes off paint. So it's a paint, you, they'll either call them paint scrapers or glass scrapers. And basically, uh, I just go onto the surface and it just cleans my glass surface right off. And I can pretty much go almost all the way across and then I just put it into one of my paper towels, get the blade clean. And so this helps me get ready for the next um, painting session. You know, there's some painters out there um, that they like to clean their palette off, you know, every 20 minutes and start with mi mixing new and fresh paints so and things don't get muddy. Um, I tend to keep my stuff on almost the whole time. And uh, sometimes if it dries, no big deal, it scrapes right off. If it's wet, it's even easier. I would always recommend um, doing it if it's more so wet than I would um, dry. So if you don't have a glass surface though, what I would highly recommend is some people use turpentine or gamsol or odorless spirits or any of the solvents. I wouldn't um, recommend it necessarily. I think a, a better solution is to get a cheap oil like a um, canola oil or a vegetable oil, some sort of cooking oil, and you can put a little bit on your wood palette and you can clean the whole surface off with that oil. Once you're done, you can actually seal your surface, make sure it's really clean and really dry, but once you're done, you can actually seal, seal your wood surface again with linseed oil. And that is, all of those things are non-toxic. You don't have to worry about inhaling fumes from the solvents. You know, over time, if you can avoid it, you don't want to inhale a whole lot of uh, solvent fume just because it's not good for your nervous system. So um, after, after uh, that, you have basically these oily rags. What we do at um, East Oaks is we have a special uh, flame preventative or flame retardant bin that's made of metal. You can buy um, these bins online. Uh, Uline and other places have them. We actually are going to have a link in our notes below uh, the, if you're on our East Oak Studio page watching this, they should be right below the um, 
the video and it says our products on it. If you're on the YouTube page, just click on the East Oak Studio link that'll take you to the website, that'll take you to the page where it's embedded and that's how you can go back to the, to the products. But basically, this opens with your foot and what this does is, is if you have all your oily rags together, oily rags have a, an ability to combust if there's a whole lot of them in the right conditions. And so this just helps prevent combustion happening and um, burning down your studio or burning down your home. So uh, this will contain the flame uh, and smother the flame even. Um, so some of them are airtight. This one's not, but it will smother uh, the flame if it, if, um, if, the, if it combusts inside. Once you are done with it, depending on what city you're in or depending on what country you're in, it will, de will depend on how you should dispose of the waste. What I would recommend is to uh, contact your local council of your city uh, or town and see how they would want you to dispose of the heavy metals that are in the, uh, the oily rags. They, you, sometimes they'll have a special pickup that'll come to your house. Some places have a location where you can drop the stuff off. So check with your local council to figure out uh, what it is you need there. Okay, so once you're done cleaning that, um, then you need to clean your brushes. So for cleaning your brushes, there are many, many, many brush soaps out there. The way I usually clean my brushes first is, is I'll initially, I have a jar just for cleaning my brushes. This is Gamsol, which is a lighter solvent, odorless solvent. Um, it's supposed to be less invasive to your body. And uh, even though probably no solvent would be better. But what I do is, is I take all the initial amount of paint that's on my brush and I swirl it in there and get probably 80 to 90 percent of the paint off of my brush. Then uh, once I've done that, there are a couple of directions you can go. The direction I usually go is I take a, a linseed soap that is made by um, Jack's company. It's called Jack's Linseed Studio Soap. You can buy this at your local uh, art supply store, uh, more than likely. Uh, any sort of Jerry's Art Arama. If you don't have it, you can go to Jerry's Art Arama's website. They will have it. And um, this stuff is magic. I have, I have taken uh, brushes that are dried with paint for days and I've soaked it in there and washed them out a little bit and soaked them again and washed them out. And it's, it takes almost all the paint out of your brush, even if it's sometimes dry, if it's not like too, too, too dry. So um, I highly recommend this. Like I said, there is a plethora of options out there for, for brushes, uh, for brush soaps. A cheap way to do it also is that I know a, a lot of people that don't even wash their brushes every day. It's a hassle. It is truly one of the more annoying things about painting. But what I have uh, found that a lot of them use is they will actually just put, they'll, they'll wipe out most of the oil the, the paint into a rag and they'll get it as clean as they can with oil you know like linseed oil or something once they've done that then they'll put it into like a little small pool of either vegetable oil which is like any type of non-drying cooking oil um, or canola oil or they'll put it into a, a little thing of linseed oil now if you do put it in a vegetable oil that vegetable oil is a non-drying oil. So don't pull it out and then start dipping straight into your paint and start painting with it the next day. The proper way to, to actually get it ready for the next process is to take either um, baby shampoo, like a Johnson & Johnson baby shampoo, or even I've heard dish soap, uh, because some dish soaps are very gentle to the brush hairs. Uh, but the recommendation I've actually heard from Rosemary Brushes is that you can use uh, Johnson Johnson or any other kind of baby shampoo and that's going to be the most gentle for some of your finer hair brushes. So um, once you've done that and washed it all off then you can go straight back into your paint and keep on painting. 
So uh, I know that Alex and a few other of my friends, they'll just, they can do it, from, they can just keep it in that pool for about a week before it starts getting a bit gummy. Um, where if they put it in their linseed oil, they can just like, you know, keep it in there for, like I said, about a week and then they start painting right with it. And then after a while, they will usually wash their brushes about once a week. So that kind of takes all of that out. Because I do that uh, and wash most of my stuff out with the turf first, I, there's such small amounts of residue of the, of the metals. I'll just, what I'll do usually is I'll put, I'll put some of this into this little cup and I'll put a little bit of water in it and I'll wash it until it's done. Then I have, we have disposal vats. I don't have it down here, but it's a polyethylene, I believe, uh, collector. And Joe's going to show you a picture of one. And you can find some for about, I think the one we have on display is about $40. Um, and what, yes, that's it. Uh -huh. And so what it does is uh, you can put solvents, so I can put any of any of these Gamsol, mineral spirits, whatever you use into it once they're dirty and done. Uh, but you can also pour all of your heavy metals. So when I'm done washing the brushes, I take the water and I just pour it straight into there. And then after, I mean, that thing can last you years before you have to dispose of the liquids they've collected into it because some of them are like five gallons, some are two, uh, a single gallon. And so once you're done, take it to the, you know, find out from your local council where you should take it to be disposed of properly and then take it there to be disposed of. Uh, those are some of the uh, better solutions that we have found uh, to be responsible with the toxic materials that you have. There is quite a few people that have quite a few opinions on these things and uh, we would highly recommend that you continue to look up all of those things, all, all the other people's opinions to find out what works best for you. Um, let's see, for the most part, that is, that is all I have. Um, so thank you all so much for, for watching. What's that? We have a question. Oh, please, if anyone has questions, um, please um, put them in. They were actually talking about um, any recommendations on ventilation. Oh, that's a really good thing. Uh, you know, we work in a studio that has pretty high ceilings. They're about 18 feet ceilings. And so the ventilation is actually decent. Um, but I would say, number one, always I keep, I rarely use my solvents. When I'm not using them, I always keep a lid on them. Um, this is going to prevent them from evaporating and getting to, into your lungs quite a bit. So um, only use a very tiny amount. You know those like little silver cups and things that people use to put on their palate? I would recommend something almost that small because then the smaller surface area that you have, the less evaporation is going to happen. And so um, the least amount of worry I would have on how much is being inhaled into my lungs. Um, the other thing is, is there are filtration systems that you can buy uh, if you feel that you know, you can afford that kind of thing. They are kind of expensive. And I do think that if you do this, you don't really have to worry as much about ventilation because you're just using such a tiny amount. I would say though, if you are pregnant, um, I would most certainly look down the route of the things that are solvent-free options, uh, like cleaning your brushes with oil and uh, seeing what kind of uh, mediums you can use that would help replace oil as one of your possible mediums that you could be using. So that's a great question. Are there any other questions? That's it. Um, well, everyone, uh, if you want, we can we can talk a little bit more about um, you know, what's that? Oh, the cabinet. Yes. So the one other thing that I, I had forgotten to mention on my notes is that these all of these jars obviously. They, solvents have a, a flash point that is relatively low. Gamsol is, is a little bit higher, so that's one of the reasons why I prefer it. And um, what the flash point basically means is it's a low, the lower the temperature, the um, it, it flash point basically is talking about what temperature does it actually combust 
at. So um, obviously it's not going to be anywhere near room temperature. But if say it's in a studio space that is well lit and has a whole lot of greenhouse effects and all like all these conditions happen to align perfectly, you don't want it to combust on you. So what um, a lot of universities and places recommend is basically the same thing as this can they make a cabinet that does the same thing. And basically you just place your jar in the cabinet. It's a flame retardant cabinet that is designed for containing any flames that might happen from combustion. And um, you can buy those. On, we have links to where you can buy those as well. And they are, I would say they're a pretty good investment. Obviously these are hideous colors, but they are regulation colors for uh, special uh, like like our university or other places that you know are having to hold to fire codes so they're either going to be like a bright fire engine red or this bright bright yellow so um, if you're looking at it and you're like oh that's so not going to be part of the feng shui of my uh, my studio space um, just note it's going to keep you alive um, we just literally just a few days ago had an explosion happen in Durham and uh, where a gas line leak happened and it took out like half a city block. And so it's so important to actually think about these things. Um, so um, are there any more questions? Y'all, thank you so much for, for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like it and share it with others. So that if there's anybody you have in mind that might uh, benefit from it. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again. If you have, uh, we also have lots of products on East Oak Studio website. If you have any more questions in the future, please email us at info at eastoakstudio.com. Thanks for watching again.